support. Uh, through your music, you've managed to make people across different communities feel heard by speaking about the challenges and struggles Americans face. When we spoke briefly before the hearing, you used the term, you're a man of service. I've heard you say that publicly. You said it privately. I appreciate that. It's part of your recovery that people recovering from addiction, from addiction need to have a group of people speaking for them that look like, that look like them. Um, we have experts who speak to numbers and stats, but from your point of view, describe the everyday struggle of addiction, if you would. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's nothing less than devastating. It is truly the biggest crisis I've seen in America. It's, um, I'm sad. I'm almost 40 years old, Senator Brown and, and Senator Scott. I have lived long enough to see almost every form of drug uh, that has came across since the 80s. And I grew up in a household that had multiple addicts and alcoholics in that household. I have seen drugs from an early age, and I can tell you that every alcohol I've seen and every drug I've seen, nothing has held a candle to what's happening with fentanyl in the United States of America. I'm seeing people shatter. I'm seeing families get broken. I'm seeing, like I spoke about in my speech, um, it's important to note that the real victims is, there's, there's a quote that says, the addict isn't the only person in the family that suffers from the symptoms of the addiction. The entire family suffers with the addict. The entire family rallies around the addict and carries that. The addict is, is not the only victim in this. It spreads far. Thank you. Most of us up here uh, can't sing all that well, but what we can do is legislate. What would, um, what kind of signal would it send to the people you talk to who struggle to feel heard and seen if we come together in both houses as we have in the Senate, 23 nothing here and then the Senate floor? If we can do that in the House, what kind of signal will it be sent to the people whom you're fighting for? It's immeasurable. It's immeasurable because from the outside looking in, we don't see nothing happening in D.C. except fights. All we see is war and all we see is division. And it makes us feel unheard and unseen. And it makes us feel like our problems will always get caught in the middle of some kind of a partisan issue. And you and Senator Scott coming together and this committee has taken the first step that I think could be the beginning of the change that is needed in America, not just D.C. Because this isn't the only bipartisan bill that needs to be spoke about. It's the mountain in front of us. But there are many mountains behind that one that must be spoke about, too. And I applaud you all for taking the first step because me being here, I know for sure that some of my people are watching this right now. And for the first time ever, we feel heard. The voice, the voiceless feel like they have a voice in Washington, D.C. today, and I carry that with pride as I stand here with y'all. Thank you. Uh, President Yost, uh, tell us about how this crisis affects your officers, your FOP members, and other officers, both the physical threat of toxic exposure and the psychological burden of dealing with overdoses and really the devastation caused to families and communities by fentanyl. Senator, the, uh... Sorry. Senator, the... It really is a two-part. One of them I'll talk just briefly, and that is, is just a potential exposure of our, of our members themselves to, to these poisons, uh, just in our, in our normal enforcement of it and coming in contact with, the, with it. But, but I think really one, the, the one that we, uh, I guess, maybe underestimate, you know, law enforcement officers are human. Uh, we, we, you know, we struggle with, uh, with a lot of things as well, and, and uh, this repetitive trying to, trying to fix the problem, trying to assist those that are overdosing, and then having to deal with the families after to carry this tragedy back to them. You know, we're human, and it takes a toll on us as well, and it's happening over and over and over and over. And uh, that repetitive uh, effort, you know, repetitive action uh, to our members, it, it, it certainly takes its toll on the mental being of law enforcement officers as well. It's time to get a handle on this. You know, every single day, I mean, what makes a crisis? Is it 1,000 is it people a day? Uh, is, it, is it 500? Is it 110,000 a year? Because that's what it was last year. We, we have a crisis here. And uh, talking about it is not going to get us there. We need the tools in order to be able to address it and address it on multiple levels, not just, not just in the enforcement side of it, but also uh, the families and those that are affected by it as well. This has to be a, a multifaceted approach. Uh, every spoke in the wheel needs to be working, and we need, to, we need to break this up. We need to take away the profit of, the, uh, of those that are profiting from, the, from the, you know, the slaughter of Americans. And we need to take it, and as long as it's profitable, they're going to continue to do it. Thank you. Uh, when I, thank you for that. Um, when I talk to, I hear that all the time, what you said, officers from Ashtabula and Cincinnati, FOP members, deputy sheriffs, other police officers from Toledo to Athens. And thank you for 
saying that. Um, Mr. Urban, you, you described better than I've ever heard sort of the follow the money. Senator Scott and I, when we talk about this, both of us have talked about principally you follow the money. Um, China and Mexico, you've talked how that money makes its way into all three societies so well. Um, what what is in the last minute or two? I'm sorry for not giving you much time. How does fend off fentanyl? How does how does it how does it unearth that? How does it attack that? How does this bill help us follow the money? So it, 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 it's offensive operations against the money laundering networks. Certainly in my career, following the money was what led me to success against transnational organized crime around the globe, whether it be Russian organized crime, Hezbollah, Mexican cartels, Colombian cartels, what have you. But Fend Ad itself, and the common theme I've heard is unite as a country. What I suggest is during my career is imposing justice on our adversaries. It was always satisfying and rewarding bringing those traffickers to justice, whether it be in the Southern District of New York or elsewhere. And in terms of the FEND Act itself, sanctions can impose costs on the Mexican cartels. Sanctions, aggressive sanctioning, a platform set up. Sanctions usually take historically six to nine months with an indictment. The FEND Act, with the funding and, and, and the focus that I see behind it, you want to go something more like four to six weeks without an indictment. So you want to act with speed against our adversaries, whether they be the Mexican cartels, the Chinese precursor facilitators, or the chemical companies it, it itself. Uh, the AML and compliance, the additional oversight, will allow law enforcement to connect the dots. And I can get into data targeting later, but the additional oversight that, that, that the FEND Act wants to have within AML and institutions will allow law enforcement to target these networks.